During the height of the Cold War, when nuclear tension loomed and nations prepared for the worst, one humble invention quietly became a cornerstone of survival planning, the emergency meal that needed no cooking. It wasn't glamorous, it didn't look appetizing, but it was engineered to keep people alive under conditions where fuel, power and clean water were gone. Known officially in declassified NATO and civil defence archives as compressed survival rations or no-heat emergency meals, these compact food blocks were the lifeline designed for bunkers, fallout shelters and air crews stranded behind enemy lines. What made this forgotten meal remarkable wasn't just its long shelf life. It was how it delivered full nutrition with zero preparation. No flame, no pot, no time wasted. In an age when a hot meal could mean revealing your position or wasting precious resources, these rations became the quiet heroes of survival. Let's break down how they worked, why they were so effective, and what lessons they still offer to modern survivalists today. The origins of the no-cook emergency meal trace back to World War II survival rations. The concept didn't begin with the Cold War. It evolved from necessity during World War II. Allied pilots and sailors needed emergency food that could withstand heat, cold and years of storage. The earliest versions were compressed bars made of wheat flour, sugar, milk solids and fat sometimes fortified with vitamins. These were packed into sealed tins and designed to provide up to 1,000 calories per bar. The United States produced one of the best-known examples, the K-Ration Survival Biscuit, while Germany and Japan developed their own equivalents. But it was the Cold War that took the idea further. When civil defence authorities began designing fallout shelters in the 1950s, they needed food that could sit on shelves for decades, survive radiation exposure, and be eaten straight from the package. This led to the development of high energy compressed meals, squares of fortified food that didn't require heating, mixing, or rehydration. By 1962, both the United States Office of Civil Defence and the British Home Office had standardised what they called no-cook survival biscuits as a primary food source for use in shelters. These meals, you know, were not your typical military rations. Instead, they were civilian survival foods, carefully engineered for long-term storage. The formula was pretty straightforward, but honestly quite effective. A blend of wheat flour, vegetable oil, sugar, soy protein, and a binding agent like molasses or glucose syrup, all compressed under high pressure into dense blocks. Each block provided somewhere between 400 and 600 calories, and a single adult's daily ration was about six pieces. The packaging, interestingly enough, was almost as important as the food itself. Every tin was nitrogen sealed, moisture proof and coated on the inside to prevent oxidation. Tests showed these tins could survive for 20 years, even in fluctuating temperatures without spoiling. They didn't melt, mold or crumble. In fact, even after decades, unopened tins often tested as safe and edible. So, the flavour? Well, by most accounts it was bland, but tolerable. A slightly sweet, biscuit-like taste, kind of similar to graham crackers or maybe dense shortbread. But honestly, taste was secondary. The real priority here was shelf stability and energy density. Each serving provided essential carbohydrates for quick energy, protein for repair, and fats to slow digestion 
and help maintain warmth. For someone trapped underground or stranded in sub-zero temperatures, that was exactly what was needed. One of the most innovative aspects of these rations was their no-fuel philosophy. In a nuclear scenario or wartime crisis, cooking fires were both dangerous and wasteful. Fuel would be scarce, ventilation in bunkers was limited, and smoke or heat could easily give away a location. These emergency meals solved that problem completely. They required no rehydration or heat source at all. You just opened the tin, ate a block, and consumed a minimal amount of water. The blocks were designed to be low moisture to prevent spoilage, but dense enough that a small portion could keep your energy up for hours. In official shelter manuals, civil defence planners recommended pairing each meal with 250 millilitres of water rationed from stored supplies. To prevent, you know what they called food fatigue, manufacturers included mild flavour variants. One was slightly sweetened, another more neutral or salty. Though, honestly, the variety was pretty minimal. The focus was survival, not comfort. But, interestingly, in field tests, subjects could function normally for weeks on nothing but these compressed meals, as long as they had adequate water. Though these rations were designed for nuclear contingencies, they actually saw real use during natural disasters, military exercises and humanitarian crises. During the 1970s energy shortages, European civil defence departments distributed old stock to remote communities affected by flooding. The United States distributed survival biscuits, Type C, to coastal towns during hurricane recovery operations, and even decades later, unopened tins stored in fallout shelters were found intact, with their contents still edible. The Soviet Union developed its own version, known as Galetnai Pakati, which they issued to pilots, cosmonauts, and Arctic survey teams. These were just a bit richer in fats and included cocoa or vitamin additives. A single packet provided enough calories for a full day of activity without the need for heating or any sort of preparation. For Cold War air crews and submariners, the reliability of these rations was essential. In environments where every gram and every calorie mattered, Having a no-cook meal meant fewer logistical risks and, well, greater endurance. For anyone serious about preparedness or field survival, the principles behind these Cold War rations remain just as valid. The lesson is straightforward. Simplicity, stability and independence from cooking fuel are what define a real emergency meal. To replicate the concept today, one could prepare a modern equivalent using a mix of whole wheat flour, oats, peanut butter, honey, milk powder and oil. Bake at low temperature to remove moisture, then compress or vacuum seal in airtight pouches. The goal is to create a food source that's nutrient-dense, shelf-stable and edible straight from storage. For long-term preppers or researchers interested in historical methods, these recipes are a direct bridge between Cold War science and modern survival planning. In fact, many commercial emergency food brands still follow the same caloric and chemical principles pioneered in those shelter rations. High energy, low moisture, self-contained and resistant to spoilage. What's fascinating is how the most advanced survival science of the 20th century boiled down to one simple goal, 
staying alive with the least possible dependency. That mindset, honestly, remains the foundation of every serious survival plan today. In the end, the forgotten no-cook emergency meal represents a different side of Cold War history. While nations poured resources into weapons and deterrence, they also invested in practical systems to preserve life. These compact food blocks were the unseen lifeline that made survival in isolation possible, bridging the gap between technology and human endurance. They didn't rely on convenience or taste. They relied on function. And decades later, they still serve as a reminder that the best survival tools are often the simplest, most efficient solutions, born from necessity rather than luxury. If you enjoyed uncovering this piece of Cold War survival history, make sure to subscribe to In the Beginning and share this video with others who value authentic, research-based insights. Each episode reveals another forgotten innovation that shaped how humans prepared for the unthinkable, and how those lessons still matter for anyone determined to endure. Stay curious, stay prepared, and keep history alive.